Hi everybody, my name is Casey Wynn and for this video I'm going to be going over some of the material that I learned from another speaker at the blockchain conference that I attended this past weekend. The blockchain is called Discover Blockchains. Uh, it was held in Houston, Texas at a hotel called the Hyatt Regency. And, um, and with this speaker, he's a Moreno contributor. His name is Diego Salazar. And um, I want to say it again, normally I don't read off of paper, I don't read off of anything, but this time around I wrote down notes. and. Um, I keep my notes simple for me to understand, but I also wanted to share what I learned with you guys in hopes of it helping you guys learn too. Um, I know not all of us are able to attend conferences, so to be able to share my notes with you guys, I hope to give, give you guys a little insight on the material offered and what I learned. So with Diego's, um, <clears throat> His his topic was decentralization is more than a buzzword and I thought about this and I was like well what's he mean by that and so he basically means that like some people get get are turned away from from crypto or bitcoin and all of that when they first hear about it because they don't understand the terminology of it they don't understand the words that are used so I know for me um when I first looked into it, I was like, what is decentralization? What's crypto? What's a cryptocurrency? What is cryptography? Coming from a non-tech background, um, I studied business in university and uh, I studied business in college. So I had no, I, I don't have much knowledge in the tech. And so it was all terminology. It's all, it's all words that I had to uh, research and look up on and learn more and more about to understand. But it is true this is a barrier because I went through it and it took a while for me to actually jump into take my initial initial jump and 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 actually experience my first transaction and everything but I do understand that some people it is a buzzword and some people it turns people away and so um, I was very interested in sitting in on this and he started out by going through the dictionary and taking the definition and, and defining these words. But what are forms of, of, of decentral, decentral, decentralization? And so forms of decentralization are protocols, mining, governance, leadership, finances, and research development. And so um, he also stated, he, he, he went about it trying to break it down as simple as possible. He also could because he believes that it's important to unpack these words so that people can understand it and think critically. And so with that, he tried to unpack it in the best way possible. He, he um, pulled the definitions out of the, the, the dictionary, the Webster Dictionary, and I believe one was from the Cambridge Dictionary. And so the first definition he pulled up was decentral, decentralization. And so that's the dispersion or distribution of functions and powers. That's the definition he had on the screen. It came straight out of the dictionary. The next word is decentralized, and it's to move the control of an organization or government from a single place to several smaller ones. Um, that's, that was the next definition on the screen. He pulled that from, from another dictionary. And then the third one was um, centralization and this one was left blank so how he went about this he's like centralized he basically said well um you would think it'd be the opposite of decentralized and so he's on my notes it says centralized move control to a single unit so blockchain wants to take trust out of our money and 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 blockchain is anyone who wants a copy they can have it and, and the, the development is who writes the codes in the finances, who follows the money. Research, who is doing the research and, and to think practical about it because it is reality. And so, so with that being said, um, he was like, all of these are like questions to ask and, and, and to think about, but also to realize that like projects are trying to become decentralized or saying that they're centra decentralized but their inner workings are actually centralized and in and, and, and in some instances it needs to be centralized for it to be decentralized or or or, or <laughs> it's it's it was a 
is a lot to take in. And so what 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 I got out of it, what what I got out of it, I'm not a, I'm not an expert or anything. This is what I got out of it. I'm not advising you or anything. This is not financial advice. This is what I thought um, about the about what I got out of this is that in some cases of a project there needs to there there is centralization within the project to help the overall project become centralized. <laughs> and so that's like what he was saying is understanding with that what 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 needs to be centralized? What can we centralize and will it be catastrophic? What what will be catastrophic because it's centralized or because it's decentralized. So it's questions to, to think about on top of everything else that you're thinking about. And then also, um, to uh, he started the, the talk with, I'm gonna end with three questions that you should always ask about a project. And so at the end, he went through these questions and he goes, the first question you should always ask is, who do I talk to to get information? So obviously when you're interested in a project, you want to get more information to learn more about it and do the research and all of that. So first question to ask is, who do I talk to to get more info? And then the second question is, what is centralized and why? So that's like saying the question on I mentioned before, what can we centralize and what will be catastrophic? Well, when you ask them what is centralized and why, you can get a general understanding of why that section is centralized. Will it be catastrophic? Will it not? It's up to your determination how you take it. Um, but it's a question that he suggested you ask about every project, about, about a project, a project that you're interested in. And the third question is, what can I learn from history? So what can you learn from the past uh, that uh, the past of that project? What have they done? What what if they had any flaws? How did they fix it? What was their response to it? Um, if they had any good, good, good runnings? Why was it they had good runnings? How long was the good runnings and all that? So look at the history and, and do your research and, and gather as much information as possible as much information as needed for you to come to your decision on whether you want to go forth with the project or you want to back off um, and all of that. And so with Diego's, um, I what resonated with me was he was right when he said um, to me, he was right when, when he said some of these words, they turn people away and, and because they're big words and to break it down to for others to understand and all of that. And it helped me understand it even better because they are big words and, and like I said in the beginning, I was turned away from it because I didn't understand it. And, and, and I'm finding avenues to learn more and more and more like attending this blockchain conference, Discover Blockchains. And, and with Diego, I really like that and I appreciate his chat with, with uh, his, I appreciate his talk about this, this topic and, and thank you for, for talking about this and explaining it and, and assisting me in learning more. And I hope you guys were able to learn off of this and understand, understand something new. Um, if you didn't understand it before, or if you learned something new, uh, that makes me happy. If you did, let me know in the comments and suggestions below. And if you like our channel, please subscribe to it. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up.